Recently, the Health Ombuds report from a year-long investigation into claims of patient neglect and unsafe environment for both workers and patients and maladministration at the Rahima Musa Mother and Child uh, Hospital came under the spotlight. With Human Rights Day fast approaching, we explore the accountability of the health department alongside basic human rights in the health sector. Now, the campaign for free expression says that health workers are silenced and they're bullied and authorities abuse the law to cover up incompetence. Project manager at Campaign for Free Expression, Hafina Manda, has written in the Daily Maverick that healthcare workers have to toe the line or face losing their jobs. She joins us now. Ms. Manda, thank you for, for being with us. Uh, we know that the situation is dire and we know that doctors and nurses are sitting on information. Uh, what happens when they do speak out? Thank you very much um, for having me. Good evening, viewers. Um, so we, after we learned about the suspension of Dr. Tim DeMeyer last year, um, we as the Campaign for Free Expression took it upon ourselves to, um, uh, to, to begin um, um, research, to, to actually research and look at the state of uh, freedom of expression in the health sector. And what we found was that um, not only do we have people like Dr. Tim DeMeyer and of course uh, Professor Ibrahim Variava, who, whom some might know, who was suspended in 2020 just uh, during COVID, um, for also speaking out for the health, Department of Health unpreparedness to um, attend to um, patients that were uh, suffering from COVID-19 and just for prepare, I mean, um, providing um, um, health workers with uh, protective uh, clothing. Um, and what we found is that a lot of the health workers, they can see that um, what they are facing in, the, in their workplace has to do with um, maladministration and just incompetence, but they are afraid to speak out because um, the public service rules and regulations have a a clause that um, limits the ability of public workers in general to engage with the media. So what it says is if a public worker needs to engage with the media, they must seek clearance from their supervisor. But um, why this is fundamentally wrong, especially when um, the sector is faced with um, so much maladministration and corruption, is that um, um, if systems work, it's, it's okay to report something to your supervisor and expect it to be addressed. But what we've noticed is that um, a lot of the times when uh, doctors go to their immediate supervisors to report the challenges that they face, uh, which was the case for Dr. Tim DeMeyer, um, a lot of the issues go unaddressed uh, and, or just blatantly ignored. So it leaves a lot of the health workers with no choice, um, as we have seen, like Dr. Tim Demeyer did, he ended up writing an open letter, but for that he was severely uh, yeah. punished. He was suspended for putting the Department of Health into disrepute. Um, so for us, what we are noticing is a pattern whereby the department seeks to protect its own image. So they want to cover up their own mess. Um, and what they do is they, they intimidate the workers by um, using that clause in the public service rules and regulation that says you cannot engage with the media without the supervisor's permission. But we see that in the law, we actually have the Protected Disclosures Act, which provides for protection for employees of government that make a protected disclosure. So a protected disclosure is something like the open letter that um, Dr. Tim DeMeyer wrote. It is anything that um, can be reported to a member of the SAPS, to the public protector, or to, to the media, like yeah. what Dr. Tim DeMeyer did. But we see that the authorities do not consider that. They don't consider the value that that information has when it goes out on the interest of the public. They, they basically just look at how the employee has broken the public service rules and regulations. Did it help that everybody saw the reaction from Gauteng, the clampdown was pretty evident after Dr. Tim DeMeyer spoke out in the middle of last year? I'm sorry, I didn't quite get that. Uh, 
I'm saying there, there was a backlash and everybody saw the way that Dr. Tim DeMeyer was treated for speaking out. Has that helped your cause? Is, is there a greater push for health workers to be able to speak out since then? Um, I would not say that because um, even now as we speak, um, I had a call with um, Dr. Tim DeMeyer just the other day and he did um, confirm that after he had tried to respond to the Ombudsman's report, he, he actually got another, not really like a warning that is an official warning, but a warning that was stern enough, stern enough to actually make him cancel uh, a, a pending interview with the ENCA. So I think from that, we can actually see that there is still an attempt to silence public workers. Um, of course, um, people continue to to um, speak up because we have seen uh, movements like the Progressive Health Forum with whom we are launching our report. Um, they are basically a group of about 7,000 uh, health workers that have come together that are saying it has to stop. Public health, health workers must be able to speak up about their challenges in the workplace. All right, and of course, if Dr. Uh, speak out it's better for patients uh, it is in the public interest the the ombudsman report into Rahima Musa is is damning at so many levels uh, you say it corroborates your research uh, did you know about the CEO who, whom the ombudsman uh, says should face a disciplinary Absolutely. Um, so we surveyed and 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 interviewed um, quite a few senior health officials, um, some of them that work at the Rahima Musa Hospital. And what we found really, even beyond um, this, the Hauteng province, um, I think as far as uh, the, the northern, the, the western, the northern um, Cape, we find that a lot of people face similar challenges. So what we see in the Ombudsman's report on Rahima Musa is not, it, it's not something that is just a challenge for that one or hospital. It is something that is affecting almost every other hospital. We found that um, there is politicization of the appointment of senior management uh, for these hospitals, also of the boards. So essentially what we, what we heard from the people we spoke to is that uh, when the boards are appointed, um, instead of the MEC, uh, doing what the National Health Act recommends, which is to uh, make, a, a, um, an, a, which is to put out a notice, basically calling for um, qualified people to to be nominated that can be appointed. Um, these people are at the moment just handpicked, and there is not any regard that's given to their qualifications or their yeah. capability to run these institutions. Yeah, no, the ombud's saying that we need to have uh, some clear standards there. Thank you for outlining that. Uh, hopefully the pressure continues and, and doctors and nurses feel safer to speak out. Uh, that was Hanifa Munda, project manager at Campaign for Free Expression.